Hey, what's up guys, I'm Toothy Dearwright, and today I bring a tutorial on the Unturned Editor, which has had some pretty massive changes which have confused quite a lot of people. There's still a bunch of work that needs to be done with it, and more features will be added as time goes on, so everything in this video is most likely subject to change at one point or another. But worry not, I plan to keep these tutorials up to date. Also, if you want to skip to various sections in this video, there are timestamps in the description. In this video, I will not cover the things that have been in the editor since forever, like spawns or placing objects, just the things that have changed. A full tutorial covering everything new and old will come later though. But for reference, these changes include terrain changes, materials, foliage, resources, and baking. Not to mention a few other smaller things. Lastly, I want to mention I plan to eventually make a full modding series covering everything that there is to cover, from custom materials, objects, and NPCs, and even some crazy advanced stuff like animated guns and animals. Yes, somehow those are more advanced than guns. And that will all come later this year. A quick explanation on the new terrain is it's now using what's known as the tile system by default. Previously, you had what was known as legacy terrain, which was cool, but didn't have many of the features that the tile system has. Some new possibilities with this terrain is that it can be raised higher and lower than what was previously possible. You can expand or delete tiles, allowing you to make a pretty large map. It would just be out of view from GPS and chart. The arid map did this with their dead zone. It also allows you to paint 8 materials per tile, so you can have biomes if you so desire. But more on all that later. To start things off, you have 4 different categories in this section. Heights, Materials, Foliage, and Tiles. With Heights, this is the section where you can shape the terrain with various tools. Raise and Lower, Flatten, Smooth, and Ramp. Raise and Lower is pretty self-explanatory. You can control the height of the terrain, and by holding Shift, it lowers. Like mentioned earlier, you can now go twice as high and much further down. With all brushes, including materials, foliage, etc., there's the hotkey B, which allows you to control the size of the brush by left-clicking and dragging. Fall off. This can be adjusted by holding down F and dragging inwards or outwards from the circle. This will control how strong the strength will fall off from the center of the brush. If you have it at 1, there will be no fall off at all. It will raise at 100% everywhere inside of that circle. But depending on your fall off, it will be more like a point. This can be useful for making a mountain. Strength. This one's a lot more well known given it's in a bunch of other programs, maybe with a different name. It controls how strong the brush is going to be on click. One is decently strong, but you can go stronger. You can also make it weaker by putting it to 0 .01 for example, making it easier to control and more precise. Max Preview Samples. This one is a little less useful, but increasing or decreasing this will add more or less of these little preview dots on the brush. You can actually see the color shift on these with fall off. Red being weaker. Flatten. This tool works pretty much like it did before, I believe. You can hold down Alt and left click to sample the height that you want, or control it by setting a number in the box. The one unique setting with Flatten is the Flatten method. Regular works as you'd expect. It raises and lowers the terrain on that selected height. There's two others. Min, which will not raise the terrain, but lower it on that level. Max does the opposite and raises, but won't lower, which is very handy indeed. Smoothing is quite different than before, especially with the tiles. But what it essentially does is smooth the terrain. Smooth method. There's two different settings. Brush Average, which is the new version of smoothing, it's what you'll be using most of the time. It goes nicely with tile borders, but kind of lacks what the old smooth tool had, with making nice clean angles due to it trying to also flatten the terrain at the same time if you hold your brush in place for longer than a millisecond, which can be nice in some ways, and with enough tweaking you might be able to get something that works, but I still always have to fight with it to get it to work in that way. The next option is Pixel Average. This is what the smoothing tool used to be with Legacy Terrain. It smooths edges nicely and cleanly, but there's weird lumps on tile borders, making a need to instead use brush average, which in turn can mess up the slope you're going for, and can you tell that I hate smoothing terrain with tiles? The ramp tool is quite useful, it's kind of like the perfect smoothing tool, and is very useful for laying out roads, though depending on your settings will probably create some rough edges on the sides, but you can control that by changing the strength and fall off to help smooth those edges out. There are no unique settings with this tool at the moment, but instead I'll throw in a final tip with heights, which is resetting them. In the tile section you can left click to select a tile you want, then press this reset heights button to reset that tile. Materials and tiles, these two go together quite frequently. In this section you have four tools, paint, auto, smooth, 
and cut. Paint is pretty straightforward. It allows you to paint down the material you have selected. You can also reverse the painting with control and sample materials with alt, allowing you to swap materials quickly. If it's not letting you paint, there's a few things you should check. Make sure weight target is not checked. Though if it is checked and the number is below 0.5, it will most likely not show up visually or show up very subtly. I will explain more on that in a second. Another thing that may cause it is the strength, of course, but more likely than not is because of your tile material slots. In the tile section, select the tile you want to paint on. Each tile will have up to 8 materials as shown here, and if you're trying to paint a material that's not listed, it will not be able to be painted since there's no room left. Then we can swap out materials by clicking the one you want to swap in the list, to know the one you have selected, it will show up at the top. Then you can click the one you want. If you want to outright delete it, you can click it and press Reset Asset. This will remove the material, but still have the terrain painted, allowing you to easily replace it with something else. If you want to reset all the painting on a tile entirely, select the tile and then press Reset Materials. This will reset all painting done, leaving only the material in slot 0. One final tip slash warning I want to give with painting, make sure the materials are all in the same order on every single tile. If that is not the case, you will end up with materials that don't blend together properly, leaving this really strange edge between them. This has been made easy to do though with copy layers to all tiles button. Just select a tile that has material order that you want and then press it. That will then set all your tiles to that list. Keep in mind though, you'll still have to repaint if you painted stuff down in the wrong order, sadly. Automatically baking the materials is sadly no longer possible, but instead was replaced with auto slope and auto foundation. It's more manual, but gives much more control overall. Auto slope lets you paint only on sloped angles under these values. The default is quite nice, but you can tweak these to your liking. I personally go with these settings while using it. Auto foundation works similar, but instead of slopes, it paints under objects and roads. An example of this is the gravel that's commonly under houses and roads in vanilla maps. You can control how large or small you want the foundation to be with the ray radius and ray length settings. Ray mask is currently not user friendly at the moment, but in the future it will get replaced with a drop down menu allowing you to control what the foundation can go under. For example, you can deselect objects and instead select resources, allowing you to paint under trees, or you can have both selected, allowing you to paint under objects and trees at the same time. Sadly, I'm not too sure how to achieve this with the numbers here, but hopefully that'll get properly added someday. Weight target is a setting when checked will allow you to paint a material based on the blending weight you desire. For example, a weight of 1 is fully opaque, while 0.5 is only half. This is based on how the texture's transparency is set up for blending to happen. Think of it like density. Preview method. I am unsure of what this does at the moment, sadly, so I can't really cover it. Auto. This section is similar to auto slope and auto foundation, but is instead tied to the auto slope slash foundation settings inside of that materials asset file. This is useful if you are working with custom materials and you don't want to constantly switch the valleys around for those two settings, and just instead have it be controlled directly from the material itself. Not many materials have these settings by default, which is why it does nothing for most. But some that do have these settings are the Germany ones. Germany stone with slopes for instance. Later I'll explain this more alongside baking foliage. Smoothing. This lets you blend an edge between two materials. Very handy if you painted an area with a lot of strength. The cut tool is pretty straightforward. It lets you cut holes in the terrain that you can walk through in game. You can fill a hole back in by holding down shift. This tool is useful for making bunkers, entrances to caves, and much more. Foliage. In this section you have three tools. Paint, Exact, and Bake. Painting is straightforward. Select the details you want to paint, whether that be grass, pebbles, or resources such as trees. You can hold down shift to erase painted foliage or alt to erase baked foliage. If you are trying to paint in an area but nothing is happening, it may be because it's outside of this box. This is the foliage box. You can expand it right now by going into the dev kit, selecting it, and then scaling. This should hopefully be doable in the editor someday. You can also change the search type from assets to collections. Collections are pretty freaking cool. Think of it like a folder containing various foliage and resources, allowing you to paint all of these things at once instead of grass and flowers and trees all one at a time. I will explain how you can make your own collections along with converting older trees from maps that don't have the trees listed in the foliage once I move on to baking. Exact is pretty simple, it lets you place down foliage and resources one at a time by clicking. 
Very nice if you want exact placement. Baking. This is the final section of this tutorial, and it's pretty simple, but tricky if you don't know where to look or what to do. But to get the simple stuff out of the way first, baking essentially automatically places foliage and resources down, speeding up that entire process so you don't have to manually paint them down. The three main buttons are Bake Global, which bakes the entire map, Bake Nearby, which only does a small radius around you, pretty good for testing, and Bake Cancel, which cancels the current baking taking place. One thing to note, this will not revert it back if you stop it, it will kind of just stop. Lastly, you can see what percentage the baking is at at the bottom center. You have five checkboxes to mess with. Instanced meshes are things like grass, flowers, pebbles, Resources are trees, bushes, and rocks, and objects are objects. I'm not sure how to set this one up for baking. Apply scale, which if it's checked will rebake the scale while keeping everything in its place. Though for some reason if resources are checked alongside it, it removes them. I'm not too sure what's up with that. And then lastly is clear. If you check that along with instance meshes, for example, it'll keep resources but remove everything else from that category. With all that, you may now be wondering, how do I set this up with my own custom materials, and how do I control all of this? Well that's the fun part. All you need to do is copy and paste the materials, foliage, and collections you want to use. Then you can modify them along with all of their settings. First though, you'll need to go to your map's file. You can do this simply by going to the workshop section, selecting your map if it's not selected, and pressing browse files. Inside of your map's main file, create a folder called bundles. I believe capitalization and spelling matter with these, so keep that in mind. Inside that, make another folder called assets, and inside that, make one called landscapes. Now inside of this folder is where you'll be able to place all your asset files. You can sort this however you like, the names don't really matter. I will make one called Materials, Foliage, and Collections. Since I personally like the collections separate, especially if there's going to be quite a few. Inside of the main unturned folder, go into Bundles, Assets, Landscapes, and in there you can find your Materials, Foliage, and Collection asset files. Feel free to copy any of these and put them into your own map files. Copying the vanilla files is okay and is encouraged, as long as it's being used for unturned purposes. For this example though, I am going to copy all of PEI's materials, some of the grass and trees, and of course collections. Now you can name these whatever you like. I do not recommend adding spaces though. Always use underscores. The game will probably not like spaces, it's just a coding thing. And one thing you will need to do with each one of these files, every single resource or material etc, is change the GUID up here at the top. Just do this with the one at the very top, not the ones down here. I will explain the ones below in just a second. The best way to go about making GYDs is this site, link in the description. Make sure you uncheck hyphens if it's checked, and you can press generate for some GYDs. And it's important to generate a new GUID for every asset you make. Think of it like longer item IDs, you don't want them to collide because that would cause issues. The medkit for example, if you try to spawn 15, you have 6 items with that ID, the game wouldn't know what to do. Same thing applies here. Once all of those are changed though, you are good to go. With explaining these files, I will start off with materials. Texture is what is used to define the image that is used. To add a custom one, you will need to set up a master bundle and all that, which sadly I will not show in this tutorial. Mask is another texture, which is used for snow for example, to give it that shiny, glittery effect. Physics material is what determines what the material is when you walk on it or punch it. For example, foliage static is used for grass mostly, and gravel static is used for stone usually. There is also foliage. This is actually separate from physics material. Here you will paste the GUID of the grass or collection you want to have baked on that material. This is how baking is properly done now. You can then go through your collection and tweak how this stuff will bake. Then there are the redirects. You will see these with not only materials but also foliage and resources. Basically just auto changes the material during different holidays. Christmas contains a GUID of snow for example. If you don't want redirects, just set that GUID as zero. Lastly, it may not be on some materials, but there's also settings for auto slope and auto foundation. This ties back to the auto tool for painting materials. You can find these on Germany Stone 00 and a few other Germany materials. Next is resources. Most of these settings are self-explanatory, but there's one at the bottom just labeled resource. This has a GUID of the birch zero tree. 
If you wanted to change this or create an asset file for a modded tree that has not added one of these yet, you can go inside of bundles and trees. The path may be different for non-vanilla maps, but select the tree you are after and open the dat file with the tree's name. There you can copy the GUID at the top and paste it into the resource option in the asset file. That will then have the tree show up as paintable foliage. Then there's ground foliage, like grass or pebbles. Again, most of these settings are self-explanatory at this point. Mesh is the model that's used for the foliage. A material is technically the texture that will be applied. This does require a master bundle if you want to do custom stuff like mentioned earlier, but you can control the position, rotation, and the scale, and all that other fancy stuff. Lastly is collections. Under foliage here, you have various assets. You can change these GUIDs to the GUIDs of other foliage you want to use. You can also remove ones you don't want, just make sure you don't remove the wrong bracket. That will probably break it. If you don't want to forget what a GUID is, you can add comments by doing two slashes and typing out the name. Slashes mark that line as a comment, which will not be read by the game. You can also control the weight. This controls the density of the foliage and resources that get baked. You can add foliage or resources. Supposedly even objects, so I'm not sure how that's done quite yet. Going into the game now, everything should be working. You should see your stuff, and don't forget to swap the materials for baking if you wanted to do that. And there you have it, everything you should need to know for the new editor. Again, things are subject to change. Special thanks to Nelson Sexton for answering my various questions on these features I never touched. I will certainly be using these, and it's gonna save me hours compared to how I was doing things before. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing, and like the video if you liked the video. Like I mentioned in the beginning, there will be many more tutorials in the near future covering modding in its entirety. One thing I will not be making a tutorial on is how to use Blender. I will go over modeling in Unturned Style and give various tips, but not how to use the software. Instead, I will link a tutorial series you can watch if you want to learn and prepare for those videos. Overall, thank you for watching and I hope you learned something.